What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 WWE wrestlers loathed by fans due to horrible booking. I don't know how many times we've seen this where someone is getting over pushed or the, the booking of a particular wrestler just doesn't make sense. And the fans just like, you know what? We don't even care. And it's not even the wrestler's fault. It's literally them just following what Vince McMahon and creative have deemed as entertaining. And we just sit there and be like, bro, I don't want to see this. Get, get, get this person off my TV. How many years did we have to deal with Roman Reigns the, the good guy Roman Reigns that we weren't trying to buy into for so many years when all these matches and get all these extra opportunities, it got to the point where people just didn't care. People did not care. Anything that Roman Reigns did or said, people just didn't care because they just got tired of it. You know, it, it happens to uh, uh, a lot of wrestlers. You know, that's this is why audibles are in place sometimes you gotta make character changes because the fans you know even though we can definitely be fickle the fans for the most part can tell when something's not organic is being forced and it's not working you know so uh we're gonna check out some of these moments i'm sure roman reigns has to be in this list it only makes sense you know, i can see john cena being in this list because there was a period where the male audience of fans were not a big fan of John Cena because they just got tired of him. So we're going to check this out. Appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel. Let's get right into this one. Wrestlers booking is key to their popularity and overall success in WWE. Throughout history, certain wrestlers have become hated by fans due to horrendous booking. Mm -hmm. Most of the wrestlers on this list were at one time insanely popular and thankfully most of the wrestlers featured in this video were able to recover from notoriously bad booking and win the fans back. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE wrestlers loathed by fans due to horrible booking. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10, Roman Reigns. Said when it. WWE Said implemented it. plans to make Roman Reigns Called the base <laughs> of the company in 2015, everything just went wrong. WWE, specifically Vince McMahon, failed to understand Reigns' strengths and the fans simply had no desire to see him as the top babyface at that point. Although fans were clearly against the idea of Reigns' ascension to the top of WWE, they continued to push him to the moon and this resulted in some downright awful WrestleMania main events against the likes of Brock Lesnar, Triple H and even The Undertaker. It took mm -hmm. WWE years to understand that Reigns' strengths weren't as a corny babyface Thank and eventually you. in 2020, they made the call to turn Reigns heel. Reigns' work as a heel over the past few years has received critical acclaim and has been simply outstanding. Reigns has gone from a talent who is disliked by the audience to the most popular and most respected talent on the entire roster. Number 9. K His transformation was fantastic. I, I think it's one of the greatest transformations of a character since in my opinion Hulk Hogan I'm, I'm putting it up there it's one of the greatest character transformations since Hulk Hogan bro we never got to experience that with John Cena I think John Cena would have been in that category if they ever would have turned him heel I think that would have been something very interesting but Hulk Hogan and I'm sure he'll probably be on this list was beloved but then his his gimmick got old you know, it, it wasn't really it wasn't really sticking with the fans anymore. Once he went heel and joined the NWO, they created the NWO, it was over. He became one of the most over individuals in wrestling. And that's why I compare Roman Reigns leaving the big dog gimmick. You, I used to hate when Michael Cole would say that. The big dog to the tribal chief. It's one of very great transformation and has ultimately made his career 10 times better in my opinion. Kane. A debuting in 97, Kane instantly made a connection with the fans. Debuting as the half-brother of The Undertaker, mm -hmm. Kane had a tough task to live up to the hype and he managed to do that extremely well. However, in 2013, a huge shift happened and the introduction of corporate Kane resulted in fans resenting him as an active wrestler. Yeah. WWE would strip away everything that made Kane's character special and he was now a corporate shell working for Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. One of the central issues with Kane's character was that it seemed to ignore previous WWE continuity yeah. and now Kane was seemingly a completely normal human being able to have a corporate role in the biggest wrestling company in the world. 
fans undeniably hated this character. Definitely Thankfully, did. they eventually reverted Kane back to his sinister, demonic character by the end of 2015. Number eight, the big. Sh but at that point, I didn't care. <laughs> it was just I, I didn't care. Like no, I, I didn't respect what he's done in the ring. I just felt like they, they. I get it. They're trying to, you know, I guess you can say beef up the authority at the time. But I think you could have had him be like a hired gun. And then eventually is someone you can't control and can't tame like fire. You can't really, people think they can control fire in a controlled situation. But once it starts raging and it gets out of control, it burns everybody. I think that would have been a better story having some type of, oh, we, we have Kane under, you know, under our, our, our control. And then eventually, slowly but surely, Kane starts losing it. And then they, the authority themselves, don't have control over Kane. And you could have went with that story. And I think that would have been much better. Show. Similarly to Kane, The Big Show's work oh, with the yeah, authority heavily turned fans cringe, against him. The Big Show was presented insanely strong, despite the seven foot giant being way past his prime. Big Show was so loathed at this point in his career that he was heavily heckled by the audience and yep. was often met with a please retire chance, which was a clear sign that the corporate heel character simply wasn't working. The former WWE champion would discuss the negative chance during a 2015 interview with The Mirror and this is what he had to say. No, I think I'm doing my job as a heel. I think a lot of it too is just a way for the audience to have fun. I mean, let's face it, I don't have people coming up to me in the street telling me, please retire. I have people I meet in person who are thankful for everything I've done, and they appreciate it. I think that's just the audience having fun when they chant that. After some time away, The Big Show was able to distance himself from the disastrous period of his career, <laughs> and it worked incredibly hard to earn the respect back from fans. Number well, seven here's the thing about that. Mm. The thing that was pissing me off about the Big Show Authority storyline, bro, is he's over here crying and groveling to them. I'm like, bro, what? No. Yo, no big ass should not be crying and groveling to these individuals, bro. Like, I I just, I can't, I'm understand, I get it. It's part of his heel gimmick. But it was, it was just, it was, to me, personally, it was cringe. I'm like, bro. This big motherfucker, if you want to have him in the authority, you can do something. You can find a better way than to be out here, have him crying and sniveling to you. Like, I, I just, I couldn't buy into that. But I get, I get what people are saying. Well, I get what he's saying. You know, it's a good thing that you're getting those type of chants. But a lot of times, I it was, for me personally, I was like, get Big Show off my TV. I'm just being honest. Like, I just did not care to see the, well, once I heard that, I was like, oh, brother. <laughs> but no, no disrespect. I do respect everything he's done for the business um, and the, the amount of times he's put his body on the line to entertain us. I, I do appreciate that. It's just that iteration of him. I just wasn't a big fan of Jinder Mahal. Oh, In 2017, WWE made the drastic decision to make Jinder Mahal WWE Champion. Mahal went from jobber to champion in the space of a few weeks, and Mahal's 170-day reign as that champion was, was met with heavy criticism. Fans hated this time period in WWE, oh, and they question what on earth WWE was thinking. We knew Specific what they were criticism thinking. was directed towards Mahal because his in-ring work wasn't exactly the best. Mahal had poor pay-per-view encounters with the likes of Orton and Shinsuke Nakamura, and the match quality wasn't at the level fans wanted for a 2017 in-ring product. Facts. During the duration of Mahal's reign, WWE had the likes of AJ Styles and Kevin Owens on the same show, but WWE persisted with the lackluster reign of the modern-day Maharaja. When Mahal dropped the title in November of 2017, he would proceed to move heavily down the card, which rendered WWE's 170-day-long experiment a complete waste of time. We know why we did it. We we know why they did it. It was it was for money, bro. They were they're were trying to tap into the the Indian market. We know why it happened. Number six, Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin is one of those oh, names that man. just can't seem to gain the respect of fans. When Corbin debuted on the main roster in 2016, he was instantly hated by WWE's audience. He was presented incredibly strong, but the resentment from fans seemed to stem from Corbin not coming on the independent wrestling background. Corbin's work with the likes of Roman Reigns, Kurt Angle, and Drew McIntyre received vast criticism as the feuds were rather boring and most of the blame fell on Corbin. 
Even though Corbin certainly had his doubters in terms of the fans, the same can't be said for his peers. Corbin is beloved by his WWE co-workers and he is widely regarded as being one of the safest and most reliable workers in the entire company. And here's the thing about Corbin as well. Um, I don't know, it's just like his iterations and gimmicks, they just don't land. I think his best gimmick is the lone wolf one. Even though when he had that awful hair at the time. But in his matches can be good. He's, he's not bad in the ring. I love his fucking signature and finishing move. And they protected his finishing move until recently last year. Like, no one had kicked out of it. So, I don't know. It's like, maybe... I think that he did have some like potential. I know he was money in the bank winner. I think he ended up losing it. He had some backstage heat. I think that was the reason. If he probably would have won, cashed in and won, maybe maybe something could happen. Maybe people would have bought into him a little bit more. But outside of that, it's just I don't know. Like even this gimmick with him and JBL, I just I don't care. <laughs> I don't. And it's I don't know. I just I'm not buying into it. So I don't know. Maybe time will tell, and you know, maybe he starts to get over as a better heel in a sense, but I don't know. Number five, Triple H. Two decades before Triple H was hailed as a savior of WWE, he mm -hmm. was without a doubt the most hated wrestler in the company. During his infamous reign of terror, fans believed that WWE and Triple H were holding back popular talents such yep. as Rob Van Dam and Booker T, yep. and WWE were only focused on presenting Triple H in the strongest manner possible. The negative reputation had heavily damaged the relationship between Triple H and the fans for several years, and it was only in 2005 and Triple H's willingness to make Batista into the next big thing mm -hmm. when a huge shift began to take place. Number four. And that's a, that's a very good point. Just checked out the video of Triple H and Batista's legendary feud back in 05. Triple H actually did the job for him. I would have loved for Triple H to do the job for Booker T and, and many other talents, but... I will say this, once he did the job for Batista, he literally made him, like, the strongest he possibly could. At that time, it was rare for Triple H to lose three pay-per-views in a row. At that point, Triple H could not beat Batista. Now I was like, okay, there he's really doing the job for him. He beat him three times in a row. Could not beat him legitimately, like, on a pay-per-view, in, like, a pay-per-view sense. He couldn't beat him in a pay-per-view since to gain the title back. So, you know, I, I will commend him on that. That that was a good move because, I mean, Batista was the big, big star. So, and it's crazy. Batista is next oh, on his list. Batista. When it was revealed that Batista would be returning in early 2014, fans were curious in relation to how Batista would be booked. They wanted to instantly make Batista one of the top baby faces in the company, but this was during a time when Daniel yeah. Bryan's popularity had skyrocketed. It was and anyone wrong time. other than Bryan being the face of the company simply wasn't going to cut it for fans. Batista would win the 2014 Royal Rumble, and this ended up being one of the most hated booking decisions of yeah. all time, as the crowd turned on the animal, as WWE didn't even include Bryan in the Rumble match itself. Nope. The negative crowd responses to Batista resulted in WWE turning him heel, and thankfully, they amended the WrestleMania 30 main event. Oh, the initial did. plans for the main event of the biggest show of the year were to see Batista take on Randy Orton, but this was changed to a triple threat match Which involving Bryan. Number three, Ronda Rousey. Ooh, Ronda Rousey Rousey's first too. run in the WWE between 2018 to 2019 was well received by fans. Mm -hmm. Rousey was motivated, determined, and had fantastic matches with an endless list of female stars. However, when Rousey returned to WWE in 2022, oh, something brother. felt off. Their creative vision let Rousey down as she returned as a babyface despite being a heel when she left, and the crowd rejected Rousey's character shift. Rousey was booked in a terrible feud with Charlotte Flair, and thanks to WWE's booking, she simply wasn't connecting. Rousey's booking in her second run in WWE has seriously let her down, and the fans have completely turned against her, so much so that Fire Ronda Rousey was trending during an episode of Raw in 2022. Number two. And hey, here's the thing about this. Ronda's first go around, great. It worked, it was fresh. She seemed like she wanted to be there. Ultimately, she ended up turning heel, start going, start saying stuff on Twitter. And when she left, all right, cool. When she came back, she was still saying stuff on Twitter as well, by the way. When she came back, it's the way she came back. It's like the way they set it up. It was, you knew. As soon as she came back for the Royal Rumble, it was raps. 
everyone knew, okay, she's winning the Royal Rumble. So now it's like, damn, bro, we, you know, it, it kind of takes away from potentially someone else winning the Royal Rumble that, you know, maybe fans wanted to see, like maybe a Sasha Banks or whatever. And then you just kind of felt like you knew WWE was just going to go ahead, hot, you know, give it, give it a title fairly quickly. And then that was going to be it. And her baby face gimmick didn't work because people already saw what you had tweeted. Now you're a baby face. Her promo skills have not really increased, to be honest with you. They're not, they're, they're, they're hard to get through. They're very cringe. Like, it's like, uh, it's, it's not hidden. Then her matchups with the people that she's going against outside of Charlotte and everybody else and uh, Raquel, everybody else you can't really buy into. It's just like, uh, I can't really buy in Liv Morgan standing an actual chance with Ronda. The matches were kind of sloppy. It's just it's it just a multitude of things that was just going against her in this second run to the point where people was just like, yeah, I, I don't care. And I don't even think it's, you know, entirely her fault. I think a lot of it you can blame on creative, but also at the same time, it, it also depends on how willing is she to be a part of this? How how much does she actually really care about the business? You know, and that's that's the thing that I think people are, are trying to bring into question. Goldberg, Survivor Series 2016 oh, featured the in-ring return of Goldberg. He would squash Brock Lesnar in an Which incredibly cool. memorable moment. This was but crazy. It was after this squash match where things began to go downhill. Oh, yeah. What was designed to be a one-match deal turned into Goldberg returning year after year for high-profile matches. Just a few months after the match with Lesnar at Survivor Series, Goldberg would squash Kevin Owens at the 2017 Fastlane pay-per-view, winning the Universal title. This booking decision completely turned fans against Goldberg, as yep. there was no need for him to defeat one of the hottest stars in the company, that being Kevin Owens. Yep. Fast forward to 2020, and Goldberg would once again win the Universal title as he defeated The Fiend in one of the most backwards creative decisions of the modern era. It was reported at the time that Goldberg was campaigning to win the Universal title, but the credibility of these reports were questioned. Goldberg, under no circumstances, should have been defeating a character like The Fiend, and fans were in total disbelief that they had made such a poor creative decision. This is why. I have some people, oh, why you hate Goldberg? No, it's not that I hate Goldberg. I, 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 hate, the, I hate the booking. Once he beat Kevin Owens the way he did, I was like, uh-oh. Uh oh, I'm not liking this. Like I'm, I'm not. I'm no, no. Like, it's and then what? What he did with the fiend? Ah, oh, jeez, bro. I was like, what? The fiend was already losing steam, and then the way he lost, I was just like, bro, what the, what the hell? Once again, it, it, it's just, it's just certain stuff. It's like, bro, I'm all for him going for more, one more run, but if it, if it costs damn near ruining a current wrestler that's going to be there on a week-to-week -week basis, I, I don't suggest you do it. That's just my opinion. That is just my opinion. So, uh, once again, don't hate him. Love Goldberg. I hated what they did booking-wise. That was not for me. Whenever Goldberg returns for another match, whether that being against The Undertaker or Roman Reigns, fans are universally grown as they simply have no desire to see the Hall of Famer wrestle again. Yeah. And number one, John oh, Cena. For the longest on time, list. John Cena was one of the most polarizing figures in all of WWE. Cena was the face of WWE for a substantial period, and a strong portion of the fans began to load Cena's strong booking. Mm -hmm. Fans wanted change, and Cena constantly conquering every obstacle and every top wrestler became very stale. Mm -hmm. They would fail to address the booking issues, and even eventually came in on the joke by producing anti-Cena merch. But when Cena launched the US Title Open Challenge in 2015, the fan perception seemingly shifted overnight. Cena put on classic after classic, and fans mm -hmm. began to realize that Cena was actually a fantastic worker. Upon Cena taking on a part-time, semi-retired role in WWE, fans who previously hated Cena became yep. avid Cena supporters, and they realized that Cena was always at the top of his game. It was just lazily executed WWE booking which was letting him down. But they have it, folks. And Ten that's WWE the crazy thing, too, man. John Cena... It's crazy. When he walks into an arena now, he gets a lot of pops. We hadn't seen that from him since early in his, in his like, like when he was feuding with JBL when he won the WWE Championship. 
the, when he was in that bag, that John, that's the last time I can remember he was getting universal love wherever he went. Now that's the case. And for a long period of time, it's just the booking of him. I'm telling you, if they would have just turned him heel, I will always stand by this. I know at one point they just they were thinking about turning him heel in 2007 or 2008, but Vince didn't pull the trigger on it. But I'm being honest here. The the probably the optimum time, and I will stand on this to to the day I die. The optimum time they should have turned him heel is when he lost to The Rock, the very first time when he lost to The Rock, and then they should have started rolling that out. Brock Lesnar return. Brock Lesnar beats him. Now he he's having trouble. Now he's starting to lose matches. John's not being super seen no more. He's starting to lose matches. It gets to the point where he says, screw it, and starts cheating, and he starts going off on the fans because the fans love that he's losing. Oh, that would have been chef's kiss great. And then ultimately, you could have just turned him babyface at a later time. Simple. Simple. But comment down below. Let me know what are some other wrestlers, if they weren't on this list, that you just hated their booking like the booking of them it just it ruined it for you like you know what i don't care to see them on my tv because i i the way they're, they're treating this character i just don't care let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel road to 150k and i am still yeah undisputed youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking with me see you on the next one peace